I make no secret of the fact that I love to knit blankets. Not only do I love to knit blankets, but I love simple patterns because I knit to relax. That means that although I have the ability to knit more complicated items, I just don't want to because they don't bring me joy. I'm a firm believer in you should knit the things that make you happy. And this blanket definitely made me happy. I'm calling this one Arthur. I used to give all my crochet blankets human names when I used to make crochet blankets. So I think I'm going to carry on that tradition with the blankets that I show you here on YouTube. Again, it's another super easy 16 row repeat. You can sit and knit this in the evening and you get a really nice modern blanket with clean lines, no holes for those tiny baby toes. And more importantly, it's lovely and simple to knit. To make a blanket the same size as mine, which is 60 by 80 centimetres, you're going to need about 400 grams of double knit yarn. You're going to need some four millimetre circular needles because the width of this blanket means that you're probably not going to fit it on straight needles. And then you're going to need some scissors and a tapestry needle to sort out your ends. The pattern repeat for this blanket is eight plus four for the main body of the blanket and then for an eight stitch edge with one stitch selvage you want to add 18 stitches so that's these two lots of eight stitches for your edge and then an extra stitch each end for your slipped borders i like slipping the stitches because i think it gives you a really polished edge on the side as well as the top and the bottom so without further ado grab some needles and let's get knitting when you cast on, you might find it easier to first cast on your multiples of eight plus four. And then once you've done that, to add on your 18 stitches for your side borders. I'm just going to knit up a small sample today. So I'm going to cast on 54 stitches. But if you want to knit the blanket you saw in the intro, you would need to cast on 134 stitches. And the written pattern for that blanket is on my blog. And I've linked it in the description below. I like to use the long tail cast on method, but this blanket will work with whichever cast on method you prefer to use. Please don't feel tied to using this method. The first bit of this blanket that we work is the garter stitch border on the bottom edge. So the first 16 rows are exactly the same and you want to work those in the following way. You want to knit every single stitch until you have one stitch left on your left hand needle. So knit until one stitch remains. When you have one stitch left on your left hand needle, you want to slip that pearlwise with the yarn in front. The way I do that as a continental knitter is to pick up my working yarn and just slide it onto my right hand needle and then go into my stitch as if to purl and slip it from my left needle to my right needle. And then I just flip the yarn back around so that it's sat at the front of my work. And you want to do that for 15 more rows so that you've worked a total of 16 rows. So that is knit every single stitch until the last stitch and then slip that last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. After 16 rows, your work should look a little bit like this. I like this smooth side of my cast on to be the right side of my work. So alongside the smooth cast on edge, I have an additional eight garter ridges and the first row of our pattern is actually a wrong side row so when we turn our work we will be having the wrong side facing us you always know when you're about to start a wrong side row because your yarn tail will be at the same end as the needle that you are starting to knit with when you have no yarn tail at this end you know that you're starting a right side row at this point, you will probably find it handy to have two stitch markers so that we can mark the points at which our garter stitch border are on either side. Row one, you want to knit the first nine stitches. Then you want to grab one of your stitch markers and pop it on your right hand needle and that marks at the point of our right hand side border then you want to purl the next four stitches and then you want to work knit four purl four until there are nine stitches left on your left hand needle 
you should hit your nine stitches left on your left hand needle after a purl four so it should be in pattern you shouldn't have to break that purl four knit four pattern then you want to grab your second stitch marker and pop that on your right hand needle and that marks the side border at this end of our work then you want to knit the next eight stitches and that ninth stitch you want to slip purl wise with the yarn in front Row two, nice and easy, every even numbered row is like this. You want to knit every single stitch until the final stitch and that final stitch you want to slip purl wise with the yarn in front. Don't forget that as you're working along your row, you want to slip those markers from your left needle to your right needle as you come across them so that we keep them on our work to mark where those garter stitch borders are. Row three, you want to knit the nine stitches until the marker. Slip that marker over and then you want to work purl four knit four all the way along until you hit the next marker and you should finish in pattern so you should finish after a purl four when you hit that next marker so purl four knit four all the way along until you hit the second marker slip the marker over when you come to it and then you want to knit the next eight stitches and the final and ninth stitch you want to slip purl wise with the yarn in front Row four, knit all the way along until the final stitch, slipping those markers as you go. And don't forget that final stitch, you want to slip purl wise with the yarn in front. Row five, knit the first nine stitches. Slip that marker over. And then for the section between the markers, you want to work purl four, knit four. So keep working purl four, knit four until you hit the next marker. And if you've counted right, you should hit the marker after a purl four. Slip the marker over when you come to it and knit the next eight stitches. And the final stitch, you slip purl wise with the yarn in front. Row six. You want to knit all the way across, slipping those markers. And for the final stitch, instead of knitting it, you're going to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. Row seven, knit until the marker. Slip the marker over from your left needle to your right needle. And then for the section between the markers, you're going to work purl four, knit four, until you hit the next marker. Slip the marker over when you get to it and then knit the next eight stitches. You should have then one stitch left on your left hand needle and you want to slip that purl wise with the yarn in front. Rows one through to seven are the rows that build our little stockinette rectangles. And then moving forward, rows eight through to 16 are the rows that create the garter stitch stripe that separates those rectangles. So rows eight to 16 are knit in exactly the same way that we have been doing every even numbered row. So you want to knit all the way across, slipping your markers. And then for the final stitch, instead of knitting it, you want to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. So that's rows 8 to 16, a total of nine rows. You just want to knit them and then slip the last stitch purl wise. You should end up with four garter stitch ridges once you have finished row 16. After row 16, the right side of your work should look something like this. You should have your stockinette rectangles and then after those you should have your four ridges of garter stitch. This is your 16 row repeat, so you would now go away and knit that 16 row repeat as many times as you like until your project is about six to seven centimetres shorter than you want the overall length of your blanket to be. That is so we can add one final section of stockinette rectangles to make the top and the bottom of our work match so that before we have the eight rows of garter stitch edging, we have a set of stockinette rectangles. If you imagine that this is the end of our blanket, if we now started the border straight away, you would have 12 rows of garter ridges at the top 
and then only eight at the bottom. So we want to make it match. So you want to knit until your project is just shy of seven centimeters shorter than you want the overall length to be. And then you want to go ahead and knit rows one to seven once more. So knit rows one to seven and then stop after row seven. And then we will move on to the garter stitch border. By the time that you want to start your edge, your project is going to be a lot bigger than mine because I've only worked a very small sample. So you will have many more of these 16 row repeats and then you would have worked rows one to seven once more. And you should end up on a right side row after row seven and your work should look a little bit like this. Now you want to go ahead and work your garter stitch border. Just like with the bottom edge, you want to go ahead and work 16 rows of garter stitch. Um, remembering to slip the last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front and when you work this first row of garter stitch you can remove your stitch markers because we don't need those anymore so if you want to go away knit your 16 rows of garter stitch and then come back and I'll talk you through casting off after your 16 rows for your top garter stitch border you should have a project that looks a little bit like this you should be just about to start a right side row and you should have an equal eight garter ridges for the bottom edge as you do for the top edge for these blankets and for actually all my garter stitch blankets i like to cast off with the right side facing me and that's because for my cast on edge i like to have this um, smooth set of stitches as the right side and by casting off with the right side facing me I get the same sort of ridge on the top edge as I do on the bottom edge so they both match I don't always cast off with the right side facing for every project but for these particular blankets that's the way I like to cast off for this baby blanket, I'm going to work a basic knitted cast off. I have a really in-depth beginner video. If you don't know how to cast off, I'd probably suggest having a look at that one before you tackle your cast off. Because if you've got a whole blanket on your needles, you really don't want to go wrong when you're casting off. For those of you that are more familiar with the cast off, it's just a basic knitted cast off. So we knit the first two stitches as normal, not too tight. And then you lift the first stitch you knitted over the second. So you're going from two stitches on that right hand needle to one stitch. And then you work your way along knitting one additional stitch and then lifting the first stitch on the needle over the second stitch on the needle. So the golden rule of the knitted cast off is you should never have more than two stitches on your right hand needle. If you do, you've knitted too many and you've gone wrong. So work your way all the way along knitting and lifting until you get to the very last stitch and then I'll show you how we cut our ends and finish off this project. When you've worked your way all the way across the row you will find you have one stitch left on your right hand needle and you will have had no stitches left on your left hand needle. At this point you can break your yarn and what you want to do to secure your tail is to pull this loop slightly bigger and remove your needles you don't need those anymore. Then pop your finger through that large loop, pick up the tail pull the tail through the loop and then pull to tighten. You will obviously still need to sew in your ends, but I find that's a really nice way of securing that final cast off stitch. And there you can see what I mean about the ridge at the bottom and a matching ridge at the top. I like the fact that you get this little line of stitches all the way around the blanket, which is created by the way we've cast on and also by those slip stitches at the side. And that's how you knit the Arthur blanket. Just a quick couple of things to finish off. This blanket does have a definite right and wrong side, but the wrong side is not ugly. If I turn this over, you can see that you get like these shadow squares where our stockinette is, and then the rest of it is just garter stitch. So although it does have a right and wrong side, the wrong side is by no means ugly. It's still really neat and tidy. As always, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you choose to make your own Arthur blanket, please tag me on social media because I absolutely love to see what you're all creating with my tutorials. That's all from me for today and I'll see you again for another video soon. Bye!